So the NFL is so much different than even 10 years ago. You can gamble on games now in most states. Uh, the rules reward offense. Wide receivers now are much more valuable than, say, a running back. That wasn't even the case 10 years ago, but things change. And my wife always has a term. Honey, just stay current. Just stay current. You can be a hotel, a restaurant menu, or a professional coach. Stay current. The coaches that did in the NBA, titles. Those that pushed back on the three-point shot, Popovich, a regression of wins. Renovation, tweaking, adapting. Belichick wasn't really built for a lot of changes. Let's be honest, he's an NFL historian. Historians tend to seek the rearview mirror for answers. He looked backwards a lot, but Tom Brady was the protective shield. Brady was such a brilliant player and a brilliant mind offensively that Tom took care of that side of the ball and Bill just worried about culture, details, and defense. Whenever you'd push back on Belichick, who was no longer the coach of New England as of this morning, he would always say, well, our results have been pretty good. They had been pretty good. Belichick not only lost his way, I think most of it was because he no longer followed his rules and the Patriot way. No more sacrifice, no more adjustments, no more all about winning. All of it took second place to whatever made Bill comfortable. And increasingly in the last seven to eight years, what made him comfortable and it frustrated Brady until the very end was adding his kids to the staff, hiring familiar fired retreads, drafting players he wanted to coach, stockpiling picks and not taking any big swings. Simply put, Bill got lost in his own sauce. Bill was into Bill and whatever made him comfortable. He didn't stay current. You can go back to 2016. I, I have been on this with Ryan Rossillo, my buddy. We would, we would go out and have beers seven years ago and talk about this. The league was transitioning to speed, more perimeter-based speed and players. Dual threat quarterbacks. Get young, get fast, get multiple New England hasn't drafted receivers or tight ends or offensive speed in a decade worth a you-know-what. But they collect picks. Last year's draft symbolized the issues. Slowest offense in the league drafted three interior O-linemen and two kickers. They are now embarrassingly slow, no pro bowlers, offensively tone deaf, out of touch, and inept. But the Kraft family, Robert and Steven, deserve some blame too. They gave Kraft too much power. I've seen athletic directors do it to coaches. Being an NFL head coach is a 24-7 job. Being an NFL GM, similarly an exhausting, relentless occupation. Bill basically was both. You can't do both well. Bill's drafting unraveled his coaching. And for anybody in any field, it really comes down to this. Stay current. Because this is how it almost always ends for the old successful baseball manager or the legendary college basketball coach or even Bill Belichick. You are shown the door, not on your terms. Bill may have separated due to Tom Brady in the height of his career, but it's ending in a very familiar fashion for those that don't stay on top of things. He's shown the door. This morning... Belichick and Kraft are just issuing quick statements. They will not answer any questions. To the end, clunky, old school, and protective. That is not the way to age well. What is? Nick Saban. A different personality. Actually in person, kind of funny. He's leaving on his terms. Ended up in a college football playoff, the entire season symbolized Saban. They weren't very good early, had to replace the quarterback, but by the end of the year, great teaching, mentorship, Alabama was a play away from beating Michigan. He still recruits at the very highest level. His energy is through the roof, and he has pivoted beautifully over the last decade from a defensive guru, a Svengali. Bama's now quarterback and wide receiver you. 
He's always been willing to adapt. That's what he was willing to do. He didn't have all the answers. He questioned himself. He acknowledged blind spots. And Saban has another quality that I really like. And he's not perfect. But we live in a world now where everybody loves to jump on the avalanche. You see it on social media all the time. Somebody, you know, steps in it, puts their foot in it, says the wrong thing, does the wrong thing. Here comes the avalanche to pile on people. And then there's guys like Saban who actually grab a shovel and dig people out. Lane Kiffin was a punchline. Saban gave him a rope. Let me help you out. Sark, personal demons. Spiraling, career over. Saban grabbed his shovel, helped him up. Saban did that on more than one occasion. Willing to be uncomfortable. Willing to be criticized. Willing to take some shots. I like that about him. We don't have enough people like that. The other thing I like about Saban, and I'm not saying you can't be proud of your resume, right? Like, I, I'm not saying that. Tradition can be fun. I like the old Yankee Stadium and the new Yankee Stadium. It's okay to like both. I like the Rose Bowl, too, more than new stadiums. But I never felt like Saban was clinging to the past or romanticizing it. If you went up to Nick Saban and looked in his office and said, man, look at that, look at that, look at that, you know what he'd probably say? Not going to help me tomorrow. I wouldn't look. My wife often says, you can look, don't stare. Saban never stared at his success. He glanced at it, was proud of it, with a legendary work ethic. He wasn't perfect. He was impatient. He acknowledged he didn't like working with mediocre people. And, you know, there's a lot of them in a lot of fields. But I don't think there's any coincidence that in a 24-hour period, one legendary coach was shown the door. The other left on his terms. This is a story about how to age in the same industry. Willing to look yourself in the mirror. Don't stare at your success. Insular is never a good way to age. Bill Belichick got too caught up on being right and confirming right. And Saban was about getting it right. That's why he ends on his terms. We'll pivot to a broadcasting company I used to work at. We'll make eight figures, car dealership, happily married, lots of smiles, and personally, a fun guy to hang with. I'm not anti-Belichick, and I'm not just pro Saban. There's a lot of similarities. Both are workers. Both are smart. Both are grinders. Probably is a lot easier to win in college than it is in pro football, right? Impulsive owners. You only get one first-round pick a year. Saban gets 25 every year. He can hand-pick. But I watched the two guys age, and I was always taken back by how Saban, in his 70s, stayed incredibly current, felt young, vibrant, dynamic. When he got to Bama, it was a defensive culture built by him. He leaves. It's quarterbacks. It's wide receivers. It's innovation. And I think that's cool. Um, we don't know who's going to get the Alabama job. Dan Landing at Oregon has Southern connections, and the South can be pretty provincial. It's pretty much an us-and-them mentality. Kalen DeBoer, 3-0 and against Lanning, not the recruiter. In my opinion, the better coach is who I would pick, but he's an outsider. Dan Lanning is an insider. Dan Lanning just announced moments ago he's staying at Oregon. So that's interesting because, first of all, Oregon's a great job. Lanning is highly compensated. I don't think my opinion was DeBoer's the better coach. I think Kalen DeBoer, if Harbaugh left, he would be their first pick at Michigan. If Ryan Day was let go, shouldn't be. Kalen DeBoer would be their first pick. Washington's boosters are going to have to pay him 9 to $10 million to stay. He's worth it. Been to that stadium 30 times. It's packed and a revenue machine. But um, so we'll keep you updated on that. A lot of rumors last night on the Internet about Dan Lanning. I was told by two sources yesterday that Greg Byrne, a very smart athletic director for Bama, sharp and respected, has had his eye on Kalen DeBoer for months. 
Sark and Dabo Sweeney also need to be considered. I would be shocked if Sark took the job. Texas, Austin, momentum, great place to be. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.